Hello everybody, it's Rebecca here at Weimar Mermaids, and it's that time of year again! The Oscars are almost here! Yeah, so if you don't know, I really like the Oscars, I really like movies, I majored in film, and so two years ago, Caitlin over at Book Chats and I created the Best Picture tag, where every year we pick the nominees for Best Picture, come up with questions that relate to books, and then answer the questions. So this is our third year doing it. There are nine nominees this year, and a week to go before the Oscar ceremony. So I'm so excited, let's just get right into it. And yeah, some of our questions are kind of difficult. So some of them we do have or questions. So this one or this one, which hopefully will make it easier for you if you decide to do the tag, which you should all do the tag. These are in alphabetical order as always, and we're starting with Arrival. War objects have landed around the world. This is one of 12. I'm never gonna be able to speak their words. The question for Arrival is a short story or a short story collection. For this one, I am going to go with A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. And it's not really a short story collection, but it's kind of a short story collection. It's basically a story of this, like guy in the music industry and then, but each chapter is told from a different perspective and they're all short stories that kind of relate to each other in the same world and one character story will relate to the one in the next one and then the next one and somehow they all kind of tie together. And I just really thought, I thought it was really interesting. It's very like depressing in some ways, but also inspiring in others. And I just really enjoyed it. So I haven't read a lot of short story collections and so I decided to use this one for my answer. Number two is for fences. A man is supposed to take care of his family. You live in my house, fill your belly with my food, put your behind on my bed because you're my son. This one is an or question. We have a character who casts a large shadow or a book with only a handful of characters. This one I'm going with The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater because it, well, it kind of fits into both of these categories, sort of. It has probably more characters than I'm thinking of for the question, but it still has a, a very small core group of characters, but definitely Gansey cast that that very big shadow over everybody around him. Everybody strives to be like him and strives to be in his good graces and wants to be his friend. Question number three is for Hacksaw Ridge. I don't know how I'm gonna live with myself if I don't stay true to what I believe. With the world so set on tearing itself apart, doesn't seem like such a bad thing to me to want to put a little bit of it back together. It's a book with a character whose religious beliefs are atypical in their culture or their nation, or a character who doesn't shy away from their beliefs no matter what. I decided to go with I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai for kind of both of these answers as well because it's a true story of Malala who is a young girl who doesn't necessarily, like she's religious, but she doesn't follow the exact religion like to the extent of it as a lot of the other people in her culture do, which is Pakistan and Islam. She believes in her family and her father believes that women should be educated. And despite all of the criticisms and the Taliban attacks on her, she still has this really strong belief that women should be educated. So. She got shot in the head and she's still fighting for it. So if you don't, if, if that's somebody who doesn't stand for their beliefs, then I don't know who is. Number four is for hell or high water. Mama, in that been a while. Three months. Bank breathing down her neck. Everybody get on the ground! Y'all been here for a while? Long enough to watch the bank getting robbed. has been robbing me for 30 years. And this is a book that brings the elements of a Western to a different time or place or genre. This one I'm going with The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I just read it and I really loved it. And this definitely brings elements of Western to new time, new place, and new genre because it is a fantasy series. And I took, I chose this one because it's not like directly correlated to a Western, but it has some of those same elements. Like you have the, the bar, you know, with all the regulars coming in, you have, kind of a bar fight at one moment. There's the stranger, the mysterious stranger who comes to town who ironically works at the bar, so two in one here. And just kind of this like epic story of like revenge and growth and just awesomeness. So while it's not like directly like gunslinging, shoot em up western, it definitely has a lot of those same elements of kind of this epic journey and the stranger and good versus evil. It's just really, it's really awesome. It's just really awesome. Number five is for hidden figures. You're a computer at nest. 
They let women handle that sort of... Yes, it's an uphill battle. Yes, they let women do some things at NASA, Mr. Johnson. And it's not because we wear skirts. It's because we wear glasses. Pick a book that spotlights the work of women in science or mathematics, or pick a book that spotlights women in a behind the scenes kind of situation. So for this one, I'm going a little tongue in cheek. I had a really tough time with this question. I couldn't find one for the first part of it, but for the second part of it, I decided to go with Ready Player One by Ernest Cline because it's a little tongue in cheek. It's a little tongue in cheek and I don't wanna like spoil anything, but there's definitely a character who is, you think that they are one thing and then you find out towards the end that they're definitely a woman behind the scenes. And I think it's really great. If you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, I just, I want, it's a little cheeky of an answer, but you know what? I don't care, because it's pretty awesome. Number six is for La La Land. It's pretty strange that we keep running into each other. Maybe it means something. I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. You could just write your own roles, you know? Write something that's as interesting as you are. What are you gonna do? I have my own club. This is to pick a book that has some sort of reference or homage to something that came before it. So it could be a retelling, it could be something that invokes the classic literature or elements of classic literature or mythologies or things like that. So I am going with the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. You could also say the Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman, but I haven't read that one yet. But both of these kind of take the same idea and it's taking mythology and putting them in a new setting and kind of retelling about them. And so I thought that was a really cool way to demonstrate this question. It definitely pays homage to these great Greek and Roman legends and North legends and, myth and myths. And so I decided they were a really great answer for this. Number seven is for Lion. How long were you on the train? A couple of days. A couple of days. It would take a lifetime to search all the stations in India. It's a book that is about a journey home or a book that uses technology or social media in a new and in interesting way. So I'm answering both of these. The first one is about the journey home and so I decided to use Finnegan of the Rock by Melina Marchetta because basically Finnegan had to leave his home when he was a young boy. They had a curse around it and he spent his the rest of his life basically trying to figure out how to break this curse and to go back home. And then for the second part of this question, I am choosing The Circle by Dave Eggers, which is my favorite book about technology. It's very real world dystopian with technology and if you haven't read it, you should do it because there's a movie coming out with Emma Watson and Tom Hanks later this year and it's really awesome and it definitely will make you question everything that you think about technology and social media and you're like, oh my gosh, my mind is just like, meh. So it's really cool. Question eight is from Manchester by the Sea. What happened to my brother? So that's the Lee Chandler. I don't understand. Which part are you having trouble with? Well, I can't be his guardian. It's a character who gets thrust into a situation that he or she does not want. So for this one, I'm going Red Rising, Darrow from Red Rising by Pierce Brown. There's things that happen in the very, very, very beginning of the book, which pretty much it's the catalyst for everything. He was content in his life. He was like 100%, I'm happy with my like my lot in life I'm not questioning things I'm just gonna go through life and I'm, I'm gonna be happy and then something happens and he pretty much gets taken away and forced to live this other life so it's really cool if you have it like go read it just go read it it's go read it and finally question nine is for Moonlight who is you man I ain't seen you in like a decade it's not what I expected tells a story of a very specific time and place that evokes that time and place, or a book that showcases contemporary African American culture. So for this one, I decided to go with Someday, Someday, Maybe by Lauren Graham because it, I mean, it, it definitely does not hit that African American vibe, but it fits the specific time and place one really well. It, it's basically 90s New York, and it's it's really cool. She has a file effects in there. It's about a girl who like wants to become a famous actress in living in New York and in the 90s, and it's very much 
you have the file effects, you have these 90s elements, the outfits and the style and the way that things work. When I read it, I definitely was like, yes, this feels like the 90s and it feels great. For the second part of it, I don't have an answer specifically about contemporary African American culture, but if you have any really good examples, like books that fit this question, please send them my way. I'm trying to read more of that this year and I'm I'm just blanking uh, totally on answers for this, so I know that there's a lot coming out this year, but I, if you have really great ones that you know are really great, send them my way, because I want to read those. I've read a lot of like historical African American stories, but not very many contemporary ones, and I need to fix that, so definitely send them my way. Well, that is it for the Best Picture Tag 2017. This is such a, it's my favorite thing to do. I love that I get to do this every year, and thank you, Caitlin, again, for doing this with me three years in a row. It's one of my favorite things. It, it really brings me joy to do this. So I really hope that all of you will do this tag as well. We're tagging everybody. So if you like movies or if you've seen even one of these or even none of them and you or just you really like the questions because they're definitely different types of questions than most tags, then please do the tag. Send us a link. I'll link to Caitlin's video below as well. Definitely send us a link. Let me see your video. Can't wait. Let me know also what movie, which of these nine picture best picture nominees do you think is going to take the cake on Sunday, February 26th at the Oscars? I'm so excited. And anyway, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and that's it for me today. I'll see you next time.